Hey, Luminary, we are in Aries season, and it is definitely time to talk about leadership. Are you a reluctant leader, or maybe you don't even see yourself as a leader, or you know that you see yourself as a leader, but really want to step into more empowered alignment in your leadership style? Well, this episode is for you. Welcome to the Savvy Luminary Podcast, Astrology for Entrepreneurs. I'm your host, Leslie Tagorda, creator of the Astro Brand Method, business astrologer, brand designer, author, and Aquarius boss woman. I help visionary spiritual entrepreneurs and impact makers like you illuminate and amplify your unique star powers so you can be the luminary you were born to be. I freaking just love Aries season. Aries season, of course, because it's like the beginning of the astrological new year. It's starting to get warm. We're all getting really excited to be able to get out again over this really extended hibernation period. But what I love most about Aries season is that we get to really analyze and revisit our leadership style. Earlier this week, I had a chance to chat with Dr. Sveta Chala. She is a wonderful leader coach and we were talking because we were trying to figure out ways that we could partner because there's so many things about our work that really aligned so as we were having a little zoom coffee chat she was sharing her leadership framework where she really talks about reluctant leadership to other women entrepreneurs right so of course we really got to chatting because I saw so many synchronicities into our approach towards leadership you know for me what I created in this astro brand method when I talk about branding branding is kind of like the overall package of like where we belong in this world of entrepreneurship how we differentiate ourselves from others how we shine brightly and to me this is all about leadership and what i notice in a lot of women entrepreneurs that i work with is that most not what I want to say most, many, (laughs) many of us do not see ourselves as leaders, right? To me, it falls into two categories about why we are not stepping into our leadership. Number one, we either don't see ourselves as leaders or we don't recognize our leadership style as a leadership style. (laughs) But you know, leadership can look like so many different things. So at the heart of it all, a leader is someone who contributes to this world, fills a need, and guides others by inspiration, influence, or teaching. And I want to get this really clear to you, Luminary. You are a leader. And as a luminary leader, you are here to shine in your brightest brilliance by clearly articulating and contributing your genius and making an impact on your world. So today we're going to really dive into embracing your leadership style based on your rising sign. So in today's episode, we're going to be covering what is our rising sign and how does it relate to our leadership? why our leadership ability is so important in our business, what happens when you're not aligning to your authentic leadership style, why a rising sign feels like a stretch sometimes, and how to illuminate and amplify your authentic leadership style. Before we dive in, this episode definitely deserves a grounding mantra because we have a lot of work to do here. So if you are able to, please plant your feet firmly on the ground and sit with a tall spine. Reach the crown of your head into the heavens and take a clearing deep breath. And I'd like you to repeat after me. I am a leader and I know exactly how I'm supposed to guide others. Let's do it again. I am a leader and I know exactly how I am supposed to guide others. So if you look up the definition of leadership on any dictionary, it'll give you some kind of definition as the action of leading a group of people or an organization. 
It doesn't really talk about how somebody is taking the lead. It just says the act of guiding others. Right. And so one of the things that I notice is that a lot of us have assumptions of what a leader should look like. And of course, this is systemic. Right. A leader should be like an older white male, you know, wearing some kind of suit, bossing people around, making a ton of money. But that is very old fashioned thinking. That is not the thinking that we have now in this place of social equity. Everyone is a leader. No matter how big or small the group of people that you are leading, you are a leader. Leadership can look like so many different things. It can look like advocating, teaching, guiding, contributing, inspiring, influencing, caretaking. There are so many different flavors of leadership. The most important thing about aligned authority authentic leadership is that it comes from your heart, meaning this is self-directed. You're not leading from this place of duty, which would sound like, oh, you should do this or you should do that, right? Like um, Dr. Sveta like fell into leadership coaching because she actually was a pharmacist for many years because she had an expectation from her family to become a pharmacist. So I should actually correct myself and call her Dr. Sveta right, Dr. Sveta Chala, she was at one time a dutiful leader. And she, in her framework, she calls it the resistant leader. But our aim here is to become a brilliant leader, as she calls it, someone who is self-directed. I like to call this an authentic leader, or my short for it all, and it's what I call you, is a luminary, one who really knows how they are meant to contribute in this world and shines in their own brilliance. Now, the great thing is that you don't have to guess. <laughs> You don't have to guess and copy or compare and try on all these different types of outfits until you find your exact leadership style. It's already in your natal chart. All you have to do is look. Last year in episode 12, I dropped an episode called The Leader You Are Meant to Be, Rising Sign to Shine. So if you want to like head back to a year ago, check out that episode for more information on your rising sign. Today, we're going to jump off and dive deeper into what this means in our business. So to recap that episode, our rising sign is kind of like the outer packaging of our brand, right? We have our sun sign, that's our superpowers of what we do so well. And then we have our moon sign. It's our baseline primal needs of how we need to feel to be emotionally secure, what success feels like to us and what recognition feels like to us. And so our, our sun sign superpowers and our moon sign soft powers, they're kind of working like an engine. They feed each other. But that's kind of on the inside of your, um, of your brand. What's on the outside? of that brand? How are you contributing it all and pack packaging it all so that others can easily understand what you have to offer and how you have to offer? And that is our rising sign. Our rising sign is the sign that was rising on the eastern horizon from that exact place and time that you took your first breath. It's so beautiful to think about our rising sign. In many ancient traditions of astrology, our rising sign was actually the most important aspect of our natal chart. And when we look at natal astrology from a traditional standpoint, you'll hear other astrologers talking about the rising sign as our personality. Because really, our rising sign is how people or other people are already experiencing us. That's what makes our rising rising sign such a great indicator for how we need to show up to lead because we're meeting people halfway there because they're already experiencing us like that so we should show up like that now it's not saying that like oh we're trying to show up and we're putting on a mask and now it's inauthentic that is not it at all but we will talk about why sometimes stepping into our rising sign can feel like a stretch but it is the thing that you exactly need to do to step step into your leadership power. 
in our businesses, our rising sign not only informs our leadership style, but it informs our branding and our visuals and how we initiate and, and share our um, communications and our promotions. It's how we can organize our processes and our lives from that first step of our rising sign. Your rising sign will always be your first step. I want you to like plant that in your hearts and your minds and your souls. Your rising sign will always be your first step in every piece of your business. Now, what happens when we are not stepping into our star powers of our rising sign? Whew. I've, I've experienced this for way too long and I want to help you shortcut all of those mistakes. When we're not stepping into our rising signs power, we don't take lead. That means we're not initiating, we're not taking action, we are just like not starting things, like failure to launch. I mean, like, I don't even know if the launch pad would even get up, really, like failure to start even, right? Again, remember, leadership is self-directed. True leadership is self-directed. It comes from the heart. It comes from what you really want to do right? So if we're not stepping into our rising signs power, we just don't, we just don't take start, right? Or maybe for you, maybe because you're not taking start, you're not contributing because you don't see yourself as a leader. You're like, oh, well, I have nothing of value to offer. I don't know what I have to offer. Or, you know, even downplaying the way that you lead as not being a leader. Like, I've met so many um, people who have like cancer rising, who cancer rising, they're so nurturing and they're such caretakers and all they have to do really is give us a hug to really make us feel wonderful. And how easy would that be if you had cancer rising to know that all you had to do to be a leader was to take care of someone, to nourish someone, to just show a little bit of love and kindness. Now, another way when we're not stepping into our rising signs power is that we seem fake or inauthentic. And, you know, there's a lot of us that have done a really good job at putting on a rising sign that doesn't really fit us right? So we go after things that don't matter to us. Like, I know that you've all met the, you know, the executive who has done her best and she's like just climbing the ladder of success and climbing and climbing and climbing, made millions of dollars. And she's like so freaking burnt out and she hates waking up every day and she somehow gets sick. I mean, that is inauthentic leadership, right? That again is comes from a place of duty versus self-initiative, right? Or we don't know what kind of leader we are meant to be. So we're always searching on the outside, looking for how other people do it. So every time we see a shiny object, like somebody's doing something new, we jump right onto that. And you know what? People can smell that from far, far away. I mean, I know you can too, right? When you find somebody and you're like, hmm, are they just copying? That just doesn't seem like that's really what is in their heart and soul right? So I hope you can see that when you're not using your rising sign properly, it makes it really hard for you to get started, for you to see yourself as a leader, for you to contribute your brilliance, for you to seem um, authentic, and for you to just show up. How are people going to know about you and your brilliance if you're not showing up and leading in your own authentic way? Again, leadership isn't about having tons of followers on social media. It's about knowing what you have to offer, how you offer it, and making an impact in your world by sharing your brilliance. So in my free Facebook group, The Savvy Luminary, and if you're not yet a member, hop on over. We have so much fun there. I posed a question about one's rising sign. I asked, what do you love about your rising sign and leadership ability? And also, what do you question about stepping into its power? I asked this question there because I wanted to get a temperature for how people really felt empowered or disempowered by their rising sign. And what I found out is that for a lot of people, our rising sign does feel like a stretch. 
And I want to validate that for you. If you're not already stepping into your power and your rising sign, know that you are not alone. Our rising sign is one of those parts in our natal chart, like our north node and our sun, and again, our ascendant that are that symbolize the potential that our soul gets to grow into in this lifetime. So of course, it feels like a stretch. Now, it doesn't feel like a stretch because we've never been there. We never experienced it. But in this lifetime, your soul chose to be born at a very specific time to say, ooh, let's get deeper into this energy during this lifetime. As one of those potentiality markers, right, this idea of leadership again, sometimes really just feels like a stretch. Like I mentioned earlier, some of us just don't see ourselves as a leader. But imagine you have permission to be a leader in your own unique style. And sometimes our rising sign feels like a stretch because we don't know ourselves enough. We haven't done that kind of analysis and illumination of the power of our rising sign, right? Alternatively, I've met some people recently who are actually really scared of the power that they hold. And you know what? This is a really huge one for a lot of us, right? Are you scared of the power that you potentially hold? And lastly, sometimes it feels like a stretch because going back to the analysis, we only know the shadow parts of our rising signs. So we start to dismiss the whole thing because we're not willing to look at the gifts that come from the shadows. In the Savvy Luminary, so many people responded to this question about their rising sign and stepping into the power of their rising sign. And I saw pretty much a 50-50 split of people who are really excited about their rising sign and people who are a little bit reluctant. So in the Savvy Luminary, Stacey Jordan Shelton of House of Audacity, if you don't already know her, please check out House of Audacity. She's amazing. She was talking about how much she loved her Scorpio rising sign. Um, When I mentioned that Scorpio rising is magnetic and polarizing and just has the pure, authentic, deep power to just say it as it is, right? just not giving any Fs about being polarizing. On the other hand, Elizabeth, who also has Scorpio rising, had said, well, it feels too intimidating for me, right? And so now we're looking at this idea of where somebody is super excited to step into their, their deep emotional power of Scorpio rising and leading from that place of um authenticity and I say authenticity in terms of Scorpio rising um because Scorpio is just is authentic power it's just it's pure emotional depth power it has the capacity to go deep it has the capacity to have all of those deep hard conversations it has the power to really say what is on her mind and not give an f if people agree or not so it's really freeing when someone can really step into that power of Scorpio rising and know that about themselves that they can talk about the hard things that they can talk about taboo things that they can they can ruffle some feathers and it's all good. That's part of their brand. So Elizabeth, if you're listening, um, understanding that stepping into this power of Scorpio, what feels intimidating about it, right? What feels, is it that pure power? Is that the stretch of being scared of the power that you get to hold? I've worked with so many Scorpio risings in my business. There's Stacy Shelton, there's Giselle Allen, there is um, Lindsay Bryan Podvin of Mind Money Balance. All of them taking authentic leadership by stepping into their pure power to go deep. So Elizabeth, what can you do to not be intimidated about going deep? For Scorpio, it's about um, when things get tough and when things get scary, it's about diving deeper. 
I know for me as a Gemini rising, when I really first started stepping into my Gemini rising shoes just a couple of years ago, it felt like a stretch. At first, I was really resistant, right? Because I was only looking at the shadows of Gemini rising. Oh, being too chatty, being too this, too that, all of the shadow sides that we think about Gemini. But I know that there are some other Gemini risings in the Savvy Luminary who are talking about all the wonderful things that they love about um, being a Gemini rising about being a wordsmith, about being witty, about, you know, um, always having the right thing to say. And now that I've really stepped in, it's been a stretch for me as well. I tell myself that when I am taking initiative, that I'm always here leading with curiosity, because as a Gemini rising, engaging and dialogue and curiosity are part of the superpowers and leadership ability. So imagine if you are also a Gemini rising, that you get to take lead by just simply asking questions. How fun is that? So one of the biggest things, if you really feel like a stretch when you're, when you're approaching your rising sign and understanding how to lead from that archetype, I want you to take a look at that rising signs archetype. You can like search in Google and type in the, the zodiac archetype and then look at all of your favorite aspects and then package your brand and lead from that perspective. So let's get into how to illuminate and amplify your rising sign in your brand. So again, know that it's a process. And this is the process that I love to give my clients. First, it's the illumination process, right? The recognition of the star powers that you get to play with. This is where the curiosity comes. Get curious. What does this rising sign mean for you in your business and your leadership role? Get curious and illuminate and recognize these star powers. After you've gotten curious, then you get to like really resonate into these powers. You get to feel into these star powers. Get really comfortable with what these star powers feel like for you. Notice what stories come up and what inner truths come up, right? You might get stories that, that shame you and tell you, oh no, that you couldn't because that's how, for most of us, <laughs> that's what prevents us from stepping into our true power, right? And then take a go a level deeper and see what inner truths come up. I know that when I work with clients and I start to talk to them about their potentials and then their karmic energies, like their moon, ah, so many inner truths that law, like that were like long ago hidden start to come up and we get to work through those when we start to resonate and feel into your star powers. And then, so once we recognize, once we feel into them, then we get to amplify them. We get to shine brightly and get confident with what leading from this place feels like now. And then we repeat this process, right? This process doesn't stop, right? I know that as I learn to be a Gemini rising, I am getting better and better and better at being the Gemini leader, at asking the right questions, at getting my big message out there. This is a process and it never ends, okay? So do know that you get to play with these energies for your entire life, always elevating, elevating, and elevating your wonderful leadership style. So let's get into these nitty gritties because I know that you are super curious about the steps to illuminating your leadership star power based on your rising sign. So first of all, of course, you want to find out your rising sign and your rising sign again is dependent on knowing your exact time and place of birth. If you don't know your rising sign or you don't know your place and time of birth, you can find what is called a rectification astrologer. And the rectification astrologer, she will help you pinpoint possible times in your life that you could have been born. So for everyone else, you know, you can go on to astro.com or astro-charts.com and pop in your birth information and it'll show you the zodiac at the time time that you were born called your rising sign or your ascendant. Your rising sign and your ascendant is also the doorway, the cusp into your first house. I'll be talking about the first house and all of the houses in an upcoming episode. 
So the first thing you want to do about your rising sign, of course, is you want to know the sign. You want to know the astrological sign and you want to discover its strengths and its weaknesses. You may want to dig into the elements. So for example, if you are a fire rising sign like Leo, Sagittarius and Aries, those fire signs, you are here to lead with um, enthusiasm and intuition and passion and creativity. And if you're an earth rising sign like Taurus, Capricorn or Virgo, you are here to be practical and to build things and to make things manifest here on planet earth. If you're an air sign, rising sign, if you are Gemini, Libra, or Aquarius, you are here to lead with information and socializing and sharing information and chit-chatting and creating connections. And then if you are a water rising sign, you are here to nourish and emotionally heal. Those would be the Cancer Scorpios and Pisces water signs. Ah, just knowing that about your leadership ability, doesn't that add so much depth and just so much freedom? Just knowing that, oh, I'm an air sign. So all I have to do is lead by sharing information. How fun. The other thing that you want to do with your rising sign is to know the modality. There are three more modalities. So if you are a cardinal rising sign like Aries, Cancer, Libra, or Capricorn, you are the starters and the initiators. You really motivate people to take action. That is your leadership style. Now, if you have a fixed sign as your rising sign, such as Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, or Aquarius, you are here to investigate and go deep and problem solve with your leadership ability. And if you are a mutable rising sign like Gemini, Sagittarius, Virgo, and Pisces, you are here to go with the flow, to assess all of the different perspectives and to synthesize information. That is your aligned leadership style. So. If you don't even know anything about your rising signs archetype, just understanding the element and the modality gives you so much information as to your aligned leadership style. Now, of course, if you want to dive into the archetype of your rising sign, I want you to like get familiar with both the light and the shadow, the strengths and the weaknesses. And of course, focusing on the strengths, not getting hung up by the weaknesses, knowing the weaknesses as like, oh, here are some gaps that I need to, and blind spots that I need to recognize and maybe hire out, right? So I can focus on my strengths. When you get to know your archetype, I really want you to get curious about what you love about your rising sign, because of course, this gives you really valid information where you want to focus on. This is like, this comes from part of your free will and your self-direction, all of the experiences in your life that you really want to love and amplify. So focus on what you love about it. Please do not focus on what you don't like about it. We spend too much of our time focusing on the things that we don't like about ourselves. We don't need to spend that much time there. So once you understand your archetype, both the lights and the shadows and what you love about it, then you get to decide which parts of your rising sign and your ascendant sign that the powers of that that you want to step into more in your business and your brand. Okay, so now for you astro, astro nerdy techie people out there like me, if you want to get more specific about your rising sign, you want to take a look at your entire first house. You want to take a look if you have any planets or other um, complete zodiac signs in your first house. These energies are going to influence your leadership ability. So for example, I have Saturn and my south node. So south node like Chiron and Saturn, all three of those plus your moon are karmic energies, meaning these are the energies that if we don't examine them well, we can place judgment on them and hold 
and it'll hold us back, right? Because you can think of Saturn as like, oh my gosh, self-doubt and constriction and restriction and South Node is like all of your past patterns and Chiron is like the wounds that you'll never heal from and, and um, Moon, like all of your past stories. And oh my gosh, before, you know, like you can hear the energy just like zapping out of you if you start to focus on those things. But if we start to look at these karmic energies in your first house, like, well, Saturn only is so responsible because Saturn wants you to achieve and get your goals. The South Node, while it is a past pattern, it is great information that you are so well versed in. So for going back to my example with the Saturn and the South Node in my first house, if it's unexamined, of course, I, I grew up having so much self-doubt. But now that I have this more elevated view of Saturn, I can see that Saturn is always asking me, are you doing your best? Are you doing your best? Are you setting the foundations and structures so that you can be a really brilliant leader? And I've really stepped into that. And I know there was somebody in the, in, um, the Savvy Luminary talking about Chiron. So if any of you have Chiron in the first house, this is really about contributing all of your past wounds into your leadership style, about leading with vulnerability, leading specifically with thing that you want to hide, that you want to heal, but you can't. Gosh, how, imagine how empowering that is when we can see our, karm, our karmic planets and energies in our first house and really turn them into this beautiful way of leading with vulnerability. Now, when I talked about if you have a complete zodiac in your first house, so you, that might be, you might have an intercepted sign in your first house. So for example, if you're Capricorn rising, but you have like almost all of Aquarius into your first house, not only would you show up as, as a, um, a really structured leader who's going to get things done and achieve all your goals, but you're going to be doing it in a new and innovative way because Aquarius is also there. Of course, there are a lot more details that can feed into the exact um, leadership style based on your natal chart, but I hope you have enough information to get really curious about your leadership style and how to really step into, illuminate, and embrace the leader you are born to be. Now, if you need more resources, again, check out episode 12, where I talked all about the rising sign. And in my book, Star Powered Brand, there is a whole section on distilling your leadership style based on your rising sign. You can order Star Powered Brand on Amazon.com or Powell'sBooks.com and any other online book um, retailer. You will find it there, Star Powered Brand by yours truly, Leslie Tagorda. Now, if you're really ready to take that next step and get clear about the leader you want to step into, I invite you to our upcoming New Moon in Aries workshop. That's happening on Monday, April 12th at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern. And in this workshop, we, and ceremony as well, we're going to get really clear about the type of leader you want to be, how you will feel when you step into that role, and what you will contribute in your own unique way. We will plant those seeds of a leadership clarity together in ceremony. So if you're ready to sign up for that, head over to the SavvyLuminary.com forward slash new moon. Get signed up early. You'll get your worksheets about a week before the new moon. The workshop is pay what you can. And for those of you that pay $47 or more, I will record a special new moon intention video for you on Loom. Head over to the SavvyLuminary.com forward slash new moon to sign up for the new moon in Aries workshop and ceremony. All right, Luminary, we are at the end. I hope you got a lot of information and are inspired to step into your leadership role. You are a Luminary and you were born
born to shine in your brightest brilliance and contribute your genius to make an impact on this world. I know you can feel it. So let's close out this episode with our powerful mantra. Again, if you're able, take a pause, plant your feet, straighten your back, lift the crown of your head into the heavens. Take a deep clearing breath. And repeat after me. I am a leader and I know exactly how I am supposed to guide others. Okay, until soon. If you enjoyed this podcast, please consider hopping on over to Apple iTunes and leaving your rating and review so that this podcast can get some love. Talk to you later. Mahalo for listening to this brand new podcast. If you enjoyed learning about astrology for entrepreneurs, help me spread the word by sharing this podcast with your business besties and hop over to The Savvy Luminary for links to episode notes and our free Facebook community where you can send me questions about astrology or branding as well as connect with other like-minded businesses.